Let's continue talking about this with uh, Adeline Kim, country manager for Singapore and Brunei at uh, Visa. Joins us around the desk uh, here at the SGX. Ad Adeline, great to see you. Why is Japan proving so popular? Well, on a personal note, I just came back from Japan uh, last week. Uh, happened to see the cherry blossoms, that's, that really helps. I think Japan, you know, like what Monica said, the, the Japanese yen definitely helps. But I think by and large, it offers, you know, something for everyone. If you think about our survey, we, we've, we've put uh, across a different spectrum of customers. And actually, every segment, including, you know, your young singles, to family with, you know, family with young kids, to silvers, actually all find Japan really attractive. Uh, one particular area that they find really attractive is food and also culture as well. I think for Japan, connectivity is, is still not as ideal, I think, to many cities as, say, many other countries like Australia. Once Japan opens up connectivity, I think that's going to also blow up our travel even further. It's interesting because we were speaking offline and my mother and my mother-in-law, talking about the silver generation, they've always wanted to go to Japan because it's this draw of tradition and modernity yeah. that... Is, is, so, is so compelling. Yeah. I think the barriers uh, that we used to perceive is, 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 is coming down. Bar language barrier, for example, um, because, you know, with social media and, you know, translate, translation apps, it's a lot easier to navigate Japan. Last week when I was there and we, when we were kind of you know, meandering through the Cherry Blossom uh, Park, um, you see a lot of uh, folks who, are, who look seemingly like they were, they were not from Japan. And they, you know, they, they look really comfortable and, you know, they were using their apps, you know, they were checking. So I think language barrier and a lot of the other barriers that traditionally people had associated with Japan is coming down. That helps as well. But, you know, as Sri mentioned, how much of this do you think is related to uh, the weaker yen? If people think, look, I can go now and it'll be cheaper than, say, next year or the year after that. If the yen strengthens, do we... Do you anticipate that some of the enthusiasm for the country would die down? Yeah, so actually we went, we went to look at the data for the past five years and the, the Japanese yen was never this weak, I guess, or the Sing, Sing dollars was never this strong against, against the Japanese yen. If you look back, backtrack to, okay, say for four or five years ago, actually Japan was still the top three destination. It never really was, you know, like a, like a seven to a one. It was always a top three to five depending on year. So I don't think the yen, the yen of obviously, the weak yen obviously helps, but I don't think it's going to, um, you know, be an be a impediment to Japan's appeal to the broader Asia-Pacific travellers. And I noticed I was looking at some other uh, visa data. We can see 85% of people in Singapore are saying, yes, they've noticed prices have gone up for travelling, not just in Japan, but just anywhere. Um, half of those people, a little bit more than half of that, said that they're making changes because of that. What, is, what does that say to the travel industry? Does the travel industry need to take notice of this? Or because people are willing to pay up, is it just mixed messages to the travel industry? Yeah, so I'm always a half-cup full person, and the other half of the people actually said that they're not going to change their plans because of the increasing costs. So it really depends on how you look at it. I think generally, you know, Airline air, air, air tickets are the prices of air tickets have tapered off a little bit. Air capacity, I think, for this year is forecasted to return to pre-pandemic levels, which is very different from last year because last year we didn't have enough air, air, air capacity. So I think that, coupled with hotels and and manpower resources easing off, hopefully will you know kind of get the travel industry a little bit easing off uh, in terms of prices, um, and hopefully that will help you know with with planning. But a lot of Singaporeans are still willing to not compromise their travel. Um, and then look for more options uh, and better options like Airbnb, for example, uh, in, when they travel.